it's always a great day at Murrayfield when the Scottish Cup competition reaches its climax and for Ayr and Melrose in recent times it's been something of a regular fixture. Both have won the trophy twice and this was Ayr's fourth final in a row whilst Melrose were appearing at Murrayfield for the fifth time in six seasons. And right from the kick-off, they put pressure on their rivals from the borders, Grant Runciman taking the ball in the air, but referee Lloyd Linton penalising Melrose, and inside a minute, Peter Jurisovic lined up this penalty to give his club a three-point lead. No problem for the scrum half, who used to play his trade for Glasgow Hawks before joining air. There was more bad news for Melrose a couple of minutes later when John DL was yellow-carded for a punch on air hooker Hayden Wojniewski. But within minutes it was Rose who produced the first real attack of the game. Callum Anderson and skipper Graham Dodds linking up and Dodds going between Ross Curl and Denford Mutamangira to put Fraser Thompson into space. But with no less than eight air players surrounding him, there was no way through. But Melrose were inside the air 22 and they won a penalty of their own, a chance for Joe Helps to put points on the board. Helps has taken over the kicking duties in recent weeks. This turned out to be the first of several attempts at goal for the youngster who relishes the big occasions. All square then after 10 minutes on the clock. But with no DL on the pitch, Air took advantage and they won possession here, Jurisovic feeding Robbie Ferguson, who was brought down by Fraser Thompson, just short of the line. But quick ball from Jurisovic to Andrew Dunlop and then out to Craig Gossman saw the winger going in for the first try of the match. High fives all round and deservedly so. Moments later, Ayr were on the attack again, Richard Dalgleish darting into contact and Melrose penalised in front of the posts, giving Jurisovic an easy three points to extend Ayr's lead in the National Stadium. But Helps kicked two more penalties, including this one for Melrose, to bring his side right back into contention and it was tight at the break with Ayr two points in front. And it was air in discipline which gave the Melrose Centre another two penalties soon after the second period. This was the first on 43 minutes straight between the posts, while the other came as a result of Colin White committing a professional foul at the bottom of this rug. Despite pleading innocence, he was in the bin for 10 minutes. Air weathered the storm without conceding any more points and on 66 minutes Nick Cox drove over for his team's third try. The referee in a perfect position to award the touchdown and the men in pink and black had regained the lead and you can see exactly what it means to the big man who's been a tremendous servant to the club. Ross Curl added the extras and Air were three points clear and sniffing victory. Joe Helps took a knock and would play no further part in the game, so when Andrew Skeen was brought down by Andrew Dunlop and a penalty awarded, up stepped Richard Mill to kick the goal from about 40 yards and tie the scores with just five minutes remaining. Surely we wouldn't be heading for extra time, something which had only happened once before in Cup Final history. As we went into stoppage time, Gary Holborn was penalised and upstep Ross Curl with the last kick of the game to try and win it for air. It went wide, so we went into extra time in what was becoming a real nail-biter. And on 83 minutes, this happened. A penalty was coming, but Nick Cox thought he could do better than that. He headed for the line, somehow got past John Diel's tackle to dive in for his second try of the game. The hundreds of air fans who made the trip went ballistic and the dream of the double was back on again. Crow's attempt at converting went wide but would that come back to haunt him? Melrose had been behind for just two minutes when Callum Anderson got his hands on the ball. The former Scotland club international found some space and got his pass out to Fraser Thompson. Thompson was still in his own half when he decided to kick ahead seeing no one at home for air. 
The chase was on as the ball bounced close to the try line and there was no way he was going to lose that race. A crucial score for him, his 10th in a Melrose jersey this season and a third kicker on the day for Melrose, Andrew Skeen, attempting to put Melrose back in front. The kick was good and as we went into the second period of extra time it was Melrose who were heading for cup glory. The referee signalled last play, Ayr had an opportunity to move the ball wide, Wisniewski's pass to Fiskin was deliberately knocked down by Richard Mill and a penalty was coming. But Ayr still had possession, curled to Kelbrick, out to Cammy Taylor, he went in for what he thought was the winning try. Drama then at the end as referee and assistant discussed the matter but the try was given, much to the delight of everyone connected with Ayr. Well, let's have a look at it again. Mill judged to have knocked the ball forward deliberately, so that would have meant a penalty in front of the post in any case. The ball was still alive, though, curled to Kelbrick, and if we slow it down further, we can clearly see a forward pass as Taylor stretched to reach it. No problem with the grounding of the ball, despite Anderson's attentions, but the try was given, and it was Ayr who were crowned Scottish Cup champions for 2013.